Hi everyone, this is Sean for Tracker Software and today we're going to take a look at adding comments and annotations to documents with PDF Exchange Editor. So the first thing that's important to define at this point is what comments and annotations actually are. The content that is permitted in PDF documents is defined by the PDF specification, which is an internationally recognized standard. This means that PDF documents are permitted to display only certain types of content such as text, fonts, vector graphics, raster images, logical structuring elements, and comments and annotations, which is what we'll look at today. A range of comments and annotations are permitted in the PDF specification, and the functionality of PDF Exchange Editor allows you to add and edit most of these. The available options are detailed in the Comment tab here. So this is the Select Comments tool that you use to select and edit comments, and these are the various comment and annotation features available in PDF Exchange Editor. So first of all we can have a look at the typewriter text box and callout tools. These are used to add text to documents. The typewriter tool does so in the style of the typewriter and the text box tool adds text in a box. So for example we click the typewriter tool and we'll see this icon appears beneath the cursor which shows you where the text is going to go and you just click and add whatever text you want to add to the document and then you can move it around later with this select comments tool. The text box tool is similar but it, it adds text in a box like so and the call out tool is similar again to the text box tool but it has an additional arm that allows you to highlight specific areas within a document so for example we can link it down here and then we can see that it's highlighting this icon here in the document. And it's important to note too that you can update the style and colors and so on of comments using the select comment tool. For example we, we go to the call out tool, we select it and you can click the format tab here and you can change the color and the style, the width of the box and whatever else you want to change. And the same is also true for the typewriter tool. We can click that and we'll see that there's slightly different options here because it's a different tool. But we can still change the color of the text and the fill color, the border size, the border style, and whatever way you want to update the comment and annotation styles in the document. The next commenting tool is the sticky note tool which adds into a document as a speech bubble which you can see here and a pop-up note is automatically added to the sticky note annotation where you can then enter whatever text you want to add and this text will remain available once we close the text box so we can just hover over the annotation first of all to see the text or we can right click it and click open pop-up note and if several users are collaborating and they're working on a single document then they can use these comments to make notes and reply to each other. You can see the add reply option down here so a second colleague can come along and add a reply to the note made by the first colleague on the document. Following that is the file attachment tool which is this one here and it adds a paperclip icon to the document you can use various other icons this is just the default icon and then you can add whatever document you want to attach to the document so for example if we use an image file and then subsequent users when they come to the document and they see the icon they can just click on it and the attachment will open straight away in Windows. The sound tool is similar to the file attachment tool but in this case it adds a different icon obviously and it's important to note that these are just the default icons a range of other icons can be used for these tools and this dialog box will open and then you can then record a sound and save it as a sound file that will be available when subsequent users click the sound tool icon in the document which will be visible like so after a sound has been attached to it so the next group of annotations are the highlight, underline and strike out tools which are used to update and annotate text. So quite simply the highlight tool is used to highlight text 
the underline tool, underlines text, and the strikeout tool strikes out text. Very simple, very straightforward. And as before, these annotations and all annotations can have their styles and colors and so on updated as you desire. And after that are the shape annotations. So we can see there's a range of different options available here. Lines, ovals, the cloud tool, arrow, polygon line, rectangle tool, and polygon tool. And these are all similar. They just have different default modes. So for example, the rectangle tool adds rectangles and the circle tool adds circles. And as before, these can all be updated in terms of their style and everything else depending on what you need for the document. And if you want to add freehand shapes, then you can use the pencil tool and obviously it's just done freehand. You can highlight or use it to write on text any way you want. And if you want to delete the freehand annotations, then you use the eraser tool. Or if you want to update them in any way. After that are the stamp annotations, which you can use to denote documents as being approved or draft or not approved and so on. These are all of the default styles and in the case of the stamp tool, the styles can't be changed, but generally they're fine for what you want to use them for and they can be edited in the same way as all other comments are. So after that there's the distance, perimeter and area tools which are used to make these specific measurements within documents. So for example, the distance tool is in this case 56.5 meters and the details, the further details about the annotation are added down here and you can change the scale or calibrate the scale as you would like to do. It's uh, available here. These are some of the default options or you can, if you want, calibrate a new scale. We just click whatever distance we want to measure and then we enter what we want it to scale to, so 30 centimeters and then that scale can be used later on when we are editing the annotations. Then the other measurement tools are for measuring, for example, the perimeter. Obviously these specific groups of tools are designed for use with um, you know, graphic design and AutoCAD documents and that type of thing. So we've measured the perimeter here and we can see the, what it scales to according to the scale that we set before in the box down here. And then the area tool is used to measure areas. And we can see it's all updated down here again. And as before, we can update the style and appearance of the comments as we see fit. And if you're working with a document that has 3D comments enabled, then you can use this feature here to add or edit 3D annotations to documents. So for example, in this document, we can see that the 3D comment has been enabled. And this is our 3D comment here. And then if we want to add a new 3D comment, we can choose from file if we have them saved on a computer or we can choose from the current document which includes this annotation which we just saw and uh, we can add it and then edit it in the same way as we edited the last one. And additional options are available for comments using these settings and features here. You can use them to create a summary of document comments, import and export comments between documents, flatten comments to the base content layer of documents and open the comment style palette which is used to view and edit the styles of all comments which is this one here. So we can see in this palette that the comments and all of their current styles and alternative default styles are listed and if for example we've deviated from the default style for example with the area tool here we can click this and click reset and the style will reset. 
and you can also click show the comments list to open the comments pane which will show you all of the comments in the current document this is the page we've been editing here and we can use this to group select and or delete and otherwise edit comments in the document so that's about all for today i hope you found this tutorial instructive thanks and see you next time